you know, strangely enough, as, as large an impact as the book The Cross and Switchblade had, whether it be the book or the movie that was subsequently released, um, you know, is I think it's only 50 million copies and the movies in languages all around the world seen by probably hundreds of millions of people. Um, strangely enough, he didn't really talk about it a whole lot. He, he really seemed present into the thing that was next, uh, like what he was doing today or what was uh, coming in the future. What was, he was, he was m uh, more likely to talk about uh, the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord's been saying to me. This is what I've been reading. This is this is something the Lord's been put on my heart. Or here's my here's my concern for the church in America or around the world. Here's my concern about the backslidden nature of of uh, of uh, or the lukewarmness of the church and how that's impacting uh, the greater culture around it. So it was more current events. There were a couple occasions though where I saw these some some really unusual snippets of his personality. We were flying across uh, the ocean uh, heading for a pastor's conference, and I happened to, he was sitting next to me on the plane. I happened to notice he was reading the Cross and Switchblade, which I'd never even seen a copy of the Cross and Switchblade in our house, uh, you know, for, probably for two decades. And, uh, and then he kind of, kind of, you know, long flight, he kind of got done with it and put it aside. And I said, hey, what'd you think? And he goes, man, I was, I was really a great guy, wasn't I? And I kind of laughed and he laughed. And I said, what, tell me, you know, unpack that a little bit. What do you mean by that? He goes, you know, he said, in a book that's 150, 160 pages, you know, it makes it sound like, you know, you snap your fingers and all of a sudden gang members are coming to Christ and drug addicts are being set free. But it doesn't really explain the equity, uh, the sweat equity, the prayer, the, 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 the callous on the knees crying out to God, the loneliness of missing your family. It might touch on it in the book in a sentence or two, but it doesn't really explore that. And, you know, he, he was commenting really on the larger uh, situation of what biographies uh, are often about. You know, our journey and our relationship with Christ is, is a whole lot more filled with hills and valleys, uh, mountaintop experiences and, and, and low points where your heart is troubled and you're kind of crying out to God, you know, where are you, Lord? And that, uh, that can't be described, obviously, in, in one book. But I, th I did get a kick out of it because, you know, he's known for a lot of things. His sense of humor is probably not his, um, the pinnacle of his personality. And so for him to sort of cut loose a little bit and make a, a comment on that, that was important. I think another thing that was uh, fun for me as I look back on it was at the premiere of the movie, The Cross and Switchblade, Pat Boone, uh, Eric Estrada, these are people that were probably a little more well known in a previous generation, but uh, at the time they were superstars and they were uh, there at this premiere. And, uh, at first I had seen the movie and I was so excited and walking out with him and he said, what did you think of the movie? And I said, I was 12. I said, that was great. I want to be a gang member when I grow up. You know, so it was totally the opposite of what he was what he was hoping for. He was hoping for the, uh, you know, I want to be just like you, Dad. And I did. I wanted to be like him. I uh, had admired, uh, do admire, and will always admire, and uh, want to emulate his ministry as much as God would allow me to do so. Uh, but at that time, it was the influence was sort of um, outside of that. Other than that, I know he was thankful for uh, what he would call the legacy. Um, you know, he told me many times when I was young in ministry, he said, you know, the Lord has given you uh, a name. So like, you know, your name is somewhat familiar, at least in the, ch in the church quarter, certainly. And, uh, but what you do with that name is what's most important. You know, if, if you have a name and you just uh, sit on your laurels and say like, oh, I'm a big hotshot, you know, look at me, I'm David Wilkerson's son, then, you know, you'll, 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 you'll bomb. Uh, but if you take that open door that the Lord gives you, and then use it with good stewardship and wise decisions that you make and a, a godly heart and a good integrity and faithfulness to your family and to the Lord and to the ministry that you're called to and dig in the word and pray, then um, eventually people will forget about your name and want the content of what God has put into your heart. So that was those were some of the things that, that you know, so the, for him the cross and switchblade was just a, maybe a platform that could give him an open door, but you know, there's a whole lot more after that as well.